In this step, we're going to adjust the 5 16 lock nut to set the backlash for the um, Y-axis uh, ball screw. The steps that I'm going to be taking are identical for uh, the Y-axis ball screw on the other side, and then also for the X-axis ball screw. The goal of this step is to really eliminate all of the lash in the um, angular contact bearings without applying excessive preload. So the tools that we're going to need for this are a dial indicator. We sell this one on our website. Uh, you really should try to get one that is uh, uh, five tenths uh, resolution. Uh, you'll need a, a half inch wrench. And then you're either going to need uh, padded pliers to grip on to the ball screw to prevent it from rotating when tightening the uh, lock nut. Or, you know, you can use just a set of regular channel lock pliers with uh, some protection around the ball screws, such as a, you know, a, a cloth or a piece of rubber or something in that, that nature, just to prevent uh, marring of the ball, ball screw. So what I've done off camera is I've got my indicator set up and I have the tip of it acting against the, uh, the end of the ball screw. And you can see that I, I haven't tightened the nut all the way because there's, you know, obviously backlash there. So the goal here is I'm going to tighten that nut until all this backlash is gone, but I don't want to tighten beyond that point to um, create uh, excessive preload in those bearings. So what I'm going to do is use my pliers to uh, clamp onto the shaft to hold it. And then I'm going to just start slowly rotating this nut. Kind of test backlash. You know, it looks like there I've got maybe, you know, four thousandths or so. So I'm going to tighten it a little bit more. I'll do a check my hand. So that's about, looks like it's about one and a half thousand to backlash. I'm going to go a little bit more. You really want to just do a little bit at a time because you don't want to overpass the point where all the lash has been taken up. So there's maybe about a thousand left. Check that. Maybe a couple of tenths, maybe two tenths. I'll just give it one more slight rotation. Check it there. Still maybe about a tenth or two. Getting a little bit closer. I'm going to just give it a little bit more. Okay, so that's probably about one tenth. The next thing I'm going to do is just rotate the screw and make sure that it still rotates. Um, okay. If you get to this point where you just hand rotate it and it's hard to turn, that means that you've got too much preload in those bearings and you're going to have to, you're going to have to start over again by backing the nut off and kind of creeping up onto that position where you've got, you know, a tenth of lash to no lash. Now, if you don't have a dial indicator set up, I strongly recommend that you get one because it's really important to have one just for machining in general. It's going to make a better product in terms of your assembly and then also a better product in terms of what you make on the machine. But if you don't have one and you don't plan on getting one, you know, you're going to have to rely on feel. So you're going to do the same steps, but you're going to have to feel, you know, you tighten it, push back and forth, see if you could feel the lash, rotate it, see if you could feel, um, you know, excessive preload, just kind of try to creep up on that. But as I said, strongly recommend an indicator. It's really the only way that you can effectively take out all the lash without applying excessive preload. As I said before, this is the exact same process on both uh, y, Y1 and Y2 ball screws. And then you, later on in the assembly process, you're gonna do the same uh, steps for doing the X-axis. And that's it for this step.